All right. Hey, guys. Today is, is Wednesday, April 15th. Um, checking in for the assignment today. Um, today's assignment is actually just a lecture, okay? So instead of just assigning the notes like I did last week, a lot of you guys said that you would rather have me go through the notes, talk you guys through it so you can kind of hear what's going on rather than having to do it um, and just figure it out on your own. Um, so what we're going to do today is, like I said, I have in the, I'll post the uh, PowerPoint that I'm using as well, but in this video, I'm going to run through um, some of the things that you guys have been looking at the past two days um, and what we're going to kind of keep going into um, to tomorrow and into next week a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump right into that lecture. Good. Share screen. Okay, so we're gonna talk about uh, population size. Um, the first thing we're getting into is how populations grow. Okay, so throughout this little lecture, the things that you're gonna to wanna to be able to take away from this is explain how ecologists study populations. You're gonna be able to identify factors that affect population growth. And then you're gonna to wanna to be able to explain what happens during exponential and logistical growth. Okay, so let's go ahead and just jump right into this. Now, the way that ecologists can, can describe populations, um, they use geographical range, they use density and distribution, they talk about growth rate, and then they get into age structure. Now, the ones that we're going to focus on today are those first three. We're going to talk about geographical range, density and distribution, um, growth rate. We're not going to focus too much on age structure. Really, when we're talking about age structure is how do, how do the different ages, uh, what percentages of the, of the population do those different ages make up? So do we have a large percent of the population has a really young percentage? kind of even all the way throughout, or are um, or some of those populations a lot older, things that are going to affect them more. Um, and that's kind of what's going on in Italy right now, is that that age structure, the reason Italy has been hit by this COVID-19 so hard um, was because they have a very, they have a much older um, age structure. So that's why you saw a lot of those numbers jump up really, really fast if you've been kind of paying attention to what's going on over there. Okay. Um, in the United States, we're kind of more even, we're kind of evenly dispersed. Um, we tend to be more, to be, have a higher percentage of, young, of younger people, and then it kind of work, looks like a pyramid. Kind of a, as it goes up, it just gets smaller and smaller and smaller, okay? Um, let's, uh, let's keep going. Now, when we talk about geo, geographic range, this is the area that is inhabited by a population, okay? So there's a couple different ways that an, that an area can, be inhabited by a population. We have three examples here. Okay, we have the trees, we have penguins, and then we have the school of fish. Okay, so if you look on the side, this kind of represents how these populations are, dis are uh, distributed. So if we look at our first example, the trees, okay, the trees go through what we call a random distribution. Okay, they're not really in any order. They kind of just show up wherever they're at, um, wherever those seeds planted, and that's where they that's where they start to grow, okay? Um, the second example, if we look at penguins, okay? Penguins, when they are nesting, um, I think most of you know, uh, both penguins, when after the egg, after the mother hatches, or the mother bursts the egg, they both kind of share responsibilities of incubating the egg um, while that egg is still growing. Um, but we, they actually go through a, a more uniform, um, type of uh, distribution where they have kind of they have their nests they don't like to be too close or too far from everybody they all have their own individual spot um, this is how majority of birds will act um, they have that uniform distribution so you can kind of see that they're all within you know three four feet of each other they don't get too far away but they don't get too close they don't want to run into and, and knock into each other's uh, space um, and then the third one is the, the school of fish. Now, if you've ever seen any, you know, ocean, um, anything, any movie about the ocean, you notice that all the, they normally have a, fi a group of fish that are swimming together. That is called clumped distribution. Okay. They, a lot of times they do this for, for protection, for safety. Um, you know, the more, the bigger the numbers, the less likely they are to be eaten by a predator. Okay. So that's how they distribute themselves. So these are the three different patterns. Like we said, we have the random, dispersion the dispersion pattern we have the uniform dispersion pattern and then the last one we have is the clumped dispersion pattern that's one way that we can describe populations okay 
Another thing that we look at with populations is growth rate. Okay, so we talk about is a population size growing? And a lot of times it's given a number um, between zero and unlimited. Okay, um, if a number, if a growth rate is equal to one, that means that the population size <clears throat> is not changing. So P, the, the amount of um, individuals leaving the population is the same as the amount of individuals coming into the population. If the growth rate is greater than zero, okay? So if it's greater than zero, that means the population size is growing. We have more individuals entering than leaving the population. We have more births than we have deaths. And then if the, if the growth rate is less than zero, okay, so if it's smaller than zero, that means that the population size is decreasing. So we're losing members faster than we are gaining members. Okay, so that's another way that we can talk about growth rate is just, or we can, we can describe a population as looking at its growth rate. How fast or how slow is that population either growing or declining? Okay. Another way, this is how populations grow. This is how that, that growth rate is, uh, is determined. There's four factors. There's births, there's deaths, there's emigration, and there's immigration. Births and immigration cause the size of the population to increase. Emigration, not look at this spelling is different with an E versus an I. Emigration and death rate or deaths causes a population to decrease. Okay, so if we have more births than deaths, and if we have more fish moving in, that's immigration versus fish moving out, moving out is emigration, that means our population size will increase. If we have more deaths than births, and we have more fish emigrating or leaving the population than immigrating or coming into the population, that means the population is going to decrease, okay? So these are the four factors that, that cause a population to either grow or decline. Now, the next thing we're going to get into is what's the difference between exponential and logistical growth? You guys kind of looked at that earlier in the week. Um, exponential growth is what we have going on right now with COVID-19. Okay, we see the number of um, the number of um, cases of COVID-19 continue to climb, 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 and it's not really leveling off. That exponential growth is what happens when there's unlimited resource. There's unlimited resources. That means that population is just going to keep growing and growing and growing and growing. Um, and there's nothing that really can stop it. Okay. Now, um, exponential growth happens normally for a time, happens for a certain time. And you're going to see this as you follow COVID-19 more and more. And that's why you keep hearing those terms flatten the curve. Um, because what we want to do is we want this exponential growth to eventually level off. Okay. And this is what's going on. This is what's going on right now with COVID-19 is that the population is, is the population of people that have it is rapidly increasing. We're seeing it happen a lot. Um, what we hope to happen is that it goes into this logistical growth. Okay. Now every population grows exponentially for a certain time. That's normally what we call phase one. Um, so it's growing exponentially here. What we hope to do is for it to is for that curve to start to flatten. And you can see that it's no longer growing. Once it gets to this point, that's what logistical growth is called. That means that the population's growth is going to slow down um, and it's going to reach what we call a carrying capacity, okay, to where this is the highest number that that the uh, environment will allow. Okay, this is we're hope this is when you hear flatten the curve, this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to get this number, the maximum number, we're trying to keep that as low as possible so that that number doesn't keep going up and up and up, obviously. That's why we have all these restrictions in place right now. So we are almost, hopefully, almost to the point where we have reached the top probably in the next two or three weeks, maybe, maybe a little bit longer, maybe a little bit shorter, just kind of depends on how things keep going, that we will have reached the highest number of the carrying capacity of the people who have COVID-19. Okay, or the, the coronavirus. So this is our hope is that we reach this number. Um, and that high point, like we said, is called the carrying capacity. This is the maximum number of individuals. Um, now in an environment, once you reach that carrying capacity, so if we're talking about a population of deer or a population of fish or whatever, whatever we're dealing with, um, that carrying capacity, the number stays right around that. Um, and that's kind of that stable number. It might go a little bit above, a little bit below. 
uh, but she doesn't see a lot of dips uh, really low or really high. Um, and you can kind of see that with the curve that it goes, it's, it just kind of forms a little squiggly line right really close to that carrying capacity number. Um, in terms of, of coronavirus, um, once we reach that carrying capacity, we're hoping that it stays flat there, and then we would start to see it go back down, okay? Um, so that's kind of what we got going on if we're gonna kind of look at it and compare it to what's going on in, with coronavirus. Um, okay, so that is how populations grow. Um, so we talked about those, you know, those different ways. We talked about the difference between logistical and exponential growth. We talked about how po the different ways that populations either grow or decline. We talked about the growth rate. Um, and then we talked about density and distribution. So how we see these organisms spread out. Okay, so that's the first part of the lecture. The second part of the lecture is the limits to growth. So what are some, you know, we talked about, you know, death and emigration limiting the size of a population, but that's not the only thing that limits it. Obviously, you can see here, you have this predator-prey relationship where the lion is hunting the animal, and that's going to cause this, the, this population um, to, to go down and hopefully, or in the lion's case, hopefully allow the lion to birth more because it's, a lot, it's able to live on and feed its young. Um, so let's kind of get into that. Okay, so things that we're going to talk about today are what are the factors that affect the carrying capacity? So we just talked about the carrying capacity is that highest number that a that a um, environment is able to is able to hold. What are the things that affect that? What are the things that limit or what are limiting factors that that depend on population density? What are limiting factors that do not depend on population density? Now we talk about population density. We're talking about how many organisms are in a confined spot. So what are some things that limit that, that are based on you know, the number of organisms that live there. Um, and then what are some things that limit it that don't have anything to do with the number of animals that live there, the number of organisms that live there. Um, and the last thing we're gonna talk about is the relationship between limiting factors and population extinction. Okay, so again, we're gonna run through this kind of quick. Okay, limiting factors. Limiting factors, these are things that determine what the carrying capacity is. So it, de it determines how many organisms are able to live there. We're talking about things like food, water, shelter, okay? Um, there's two different types that we're gonna get into. We're gonna talk about density dependent and density independent. So a density dependent limiting factor is a thing that depends on the size of the population, okay? These are things that depend on the size of the population how big or how small the population is that can that can be affected by these factors things that are examples of this are competition so you have two members of the same population that have to compete that have to compete for food water shelter um, parasitism and diseases so if there's a, a, a bug or a parasite a disease something that's spreading through the population the size of that population depends on how fastly the how fast those diseases spread um, we're talking about what the stress of overcrowding, stress of predation, and herbivory. We'll get into all those things as we walk through this. Okay, so the first one we're getting into is competition. Now, competition should be pretty, uh, pretty simple. You know, if there's a if there's a really big number of we have foxes here living in the same population. So if we have a really really large number of foxes, the competition is going to be really high because you have all these foxes that are trying to compete for the same food, water, space, sunlight, shelter, mates, and territory. They're all competing for this. So if the number of foxes is really high, competition is gonna be really high. Now, if the number of foxes is lower, then this competition may not be as high. There's not as many organisms competing for food, water, space, and all this other stuff. If you think about 100 foxes competing for, for food, water, space, shelter, all that, versus 50 foxes comp competing for food, water, space, and shelter. You know, the competition won't be as high um, with the 50 versus the 100, the 100 population. Now that's competition. Okay. Another example, another problem with this is parasitism and disease. Now, if you have a really, really dense population, if you have a lot of organisms living in a really small, really confined area, then parasitism and diseases can spread really, really quickly. Now, this is another example of what we see happening with coronavirus. You know, coronavirus has hit those big cities really hard. It's hit New York hard. It's hit LA hard. It hit Chicago hard. And what all those things have in common, all those cities have in common, 
is that there's a lot of people living in a really small confined space. So the disease spread a lot quicker in those areas versus you think about us in Canton, Akron or even Cleveland, you know, it's not as big of a city. You're not, you don't have a thousand people living in uh, an apartment building and then there's mul there's hundreds of apartment buildings on one block, so you don't have those thousands and thousands of people living that this close to that close to each other. So the disease doesn't spread as quickly um, here versus it does in those big cities, like we said with New York, Chicago, L.A. Um, so that's another that's another thing that can affect the population size. It's all based on how closely they live together. Another, uh, another one that can affect us is the predator-prey relationship, okay? So in this graph, we have an example of the blue line represents the population of wolves, and the red line represents the population of mooses. Now, this relationship, you can see that as the moose population starts to go up, so does the wolf population. When the moose population drops, the wolf population drops. We see they build and build and build, and they pretty much stay pretty close to each other, um, until you see the wolf population gets get too high, that's going to cause the moose population to drop off. So once the predators have too much success and create too many other predators, you're going to see that drop off because they're going to eat those moose a lot faster. Okay, and then the same thing will happen if you see this big drop, some virus, something happens to the, the wolf population, you see this big drop off, now you see the moose population start to, start to um, succeed. There's not as many wolves, there's not as many predators, so the prey is able to survive and, and, and grow a lot faster than the wolf population. Once that wolf pop or once that moose population gets starts to get really high again, now those wolves are able to start to grow their population and you see them start to grow um, as well. Okay, so that relationship shows that as if the predator relationship gets too high, that's gonna cause the prey to grow to drop off. If the prey relationship gets too high, that's going to allow the predators to grow, and then eventually you're going to see these drops um, like you're seeing in the graph. Um, herbivore effect. Herbivore effect is pretty much the same thing as predator prey, but this just deals with herbivores because they eat the plants, um, and they go through the same thing that if you have too many herbivores that are eating all the plants, the plants will start to drop, the amount of plants will drop off. If the plants drop off, it's not going to be enough to feed the herbivores, so the herbivores numbers will drop off. It's pretty much the same thing. Okay, now these are density independent factors that we're going to get into. These have no uh, relation or don't have any relationship with the size of the population. It doesn't matter how big or how small the population is. Um, these things that are density independent um, doesn't really matter. So we're talking about things like natural disasters. If you have an, an earthquake or a volcano or a tornado or a hurricane or whatever, well, it doesn't really matter if the population size is really big or really small, it's gonna affect them the same. So we said things like hurricanes, droughts, floods, wildfires, these all have no bearing on how big or how small a population is. It's just gonna affect them all the same. Um, Uh, now, the last slide, with we talk about limiting factors and extinction. Um, if that carrying capacity falls low enough, populations can be wiped out. So like we said, we see with some organisms that if we're killing off you know, the, the, the space that they need, if we're killing off the, their, what they eat, if we're killing off um, you know, anything else that affects them, if that carrying capacity drops so low, then we're going to see that it could lead to extinction. And we're seeing this happen with a lot of organisms now. Um, you talk about those organisms that are on the endangered species list or the extreme, extremely endangered species list. Uh, those are things that are their limiting factors are so high that it's causing their carrying capacity to be so low that they're really struggling to survive. Okay, so that was the lecture for today. I'm just going to share this. That's the lecture for today. So please just go ahead and you know, make sure you watch this and listen to it. Um, now, for tomorrow, there's not going to be an assignment tomorrow. Um, I'm going to be available again from, uh, we're going to say from 12, from noon to 2 for a, for a, uh, we don't, a Zoom conference. So a lot of you said that you wanted a weekly Zoom conference to ask questions, to you know just kind of sure up anything that you might be unsure of. So we're going to do that tomorrow from noon to 2. 
Um, all you, I'll be signed in the whole time. All, I will share out the Zoom link just like I did before the last test. Um, so we're going to do that tomorrow. Um, and then on Friday, we are going to have our weekly quiz. It'll probably only be 10 points or so, 10, um, 10 questions or so on a Google form, just like before. Um, so that is, that, that's the plan for the rest of the week. So if you are interested, I will be available for Zoom from 12 to 2 tomorrow. Uh, and just, you can pop in, ask questions and pop out, but that's, that's what we're doing tomorrow, okay? Um, now, as usual, I hope you guys are safe. I hope you're healthy. I hope everything's going well at your house. Um, if you need anything, if, if, you're, if you need some help with, with whatever you got going on and, you, and I, you think I can help, just shoot me an email and I'll do whatever I can for you. If I can't help you, I'll help find the person that can. Um, I miss you guys. I hope every, everybody's safe and healthy. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys again soon, hopefully. Hopefully in the next few weeks, this all gets sorted out. We can get back to a little bit of normalcy. Um, but I will uh, hopefully see you guys on the Zoom conference tomorrow. Um, if you have any questions about that, just go ahead and shoot me an email. All right, I will talk to you guys tomorrow. See you.